Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app, Red Circle, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, also the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. Also, check us out on Off the Floor. That's text directly to your phone, bypass X, Twitter, uh, Instagram, threads, Facebook. You just get it directly from the four of us, me, Alex, Brady, and Greg. To your phone, $3.05 per month, free for the first week so that you get a trial. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. That includes all pro construction builders. Our guy, Danny, based in Miami, but he can service Monroe County and Broward Counties as well. Why should you reach out to him? Because it's already hurricane season. And so he can get you those storm windows, those storm doors, the impact windows and doors for residential and commercial properties. All Pro Construction Builders is a state-certified licensed and insured general contractor. They service, again, Miami-Dade, Monroe, and also Broward. They use only locally made products, and it's a family-owned and operated business filled with Miami Heat fans. They offer competitive pricing, but also quality service. Mention five reasons and you get a 10% discount. Check them out on Instagram at All Pro Construction Builders at allproconstructionbuilders.com or give Danny a call directly to his personal cell, 305-484-4429. 305-484-4429. All Pro Construction Builders. And now, today's episode. Down to this gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck the said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick at Five Reasons Sports. I got Brady Hawk back with us. You can follow him at Brady Hawk 305. Greg Sylvander, you can follow at Greg Sylvander. Alex Toledo, you can follow at Tropical Blanket. We, I think, have put up four episodes. Um in the past four or five days. So make sure that you check all of those out. We did a Dwayne Wade episode on why he's been so disrespected. We did an entire episode, of course, on the Dame Lillard memo. Alex and I did an episode going through the futures in Vegas on uh, basically we did it through the top 10 NBA teams, which the heat just made the cut. So he and I went up down on those. Make sure you check that out too. But then we also did a mailbag episode from off the floor. So there's a lot on there right now. But we want to focus on Bam. We haven't talked about Bam in a while, I feel like. Um, it's been so much Dame conversation. And I, I think, and I'll go to Brady on this first. I, you know, I, well, I should go to Greg because he got upset at me on a text string. Because I, I said something uh, on the podcast the other day about how if they don't get Dame, then who does the pressure sort of shift to or who needs to give more? And I went to the default option because it's been the default option for the past couple of years, which is Bam. Because if you have Jimmy, Tyler, and Bam back and you want Jimmy to take less of a burden, we don't know where Tyler's head's going to be at, although we think that he's going to be fine based on the way he's conducting himself publicly, uh, that you need Bam to take another step potentially, even though he did take steps last season. And a lot of them were not acknowledged. He struggled a little after the All-Star break for about three or four weeks. Many focused on that. And then he had some really big playoff games, some other games that weren't as great. But the finals, I mean, he was really their most consistent player in the NBA finals, even though he's playing against Jokic. So, Brady, I'll, I'll go to you on this. Is it fair for me to say that if they again, if they don't get Dame, because they, we're going to we're going to we're going to cover this both ways. We're going to start with they don't get Dame. And then after the break, we'll get into if they do get Dame, if they don't get Dame, is it fair to say they're going to need even more from Bam? I think it's fair to say that they're going to need more in terms of the fact that you're bringing back the same roster in this instance, and they were just the eight seed in the regular season. So like in that world, yeah, you're going to need more, but I don't think it's fair just because we just saw what Bam did last season and to put more of a burden on him. And I feel like anytime anything happens, Bam is going to take the brunt of it. And I think Tyler is seeing that as well. Tyler's always going to take the brunt of things as well, but Bam takes the brunt of things while being the best defender in the league on the opposite side of the floor. And to, I'm glad you brought up the stuff he did pre-All-Star break because the craziness of the season, being an eight seed, 
going through an incredible playoff run and having those big moments took away from the fact that Bam really did take a big jump this season. It may not be in points. I think he went up a little bit over one point a game, I think, from a year-to-year basis. But the stuff he did efficiency-wise, the stuff he did in his jumper, the stuff that, you know, Eric Reed called signing at the dotted line because he just did not miss from the dotted line in that little range. He took incredible jumps. So, like, that needs to be recognized. And the fact that he is still 26 years old, newly 26 years old, that more leaps are probably coming uh, is why I think that, you know, Greg, why you say no ceiling is because he has no ceiling to his game because he can still improve. But I don't think it's fair to just put everything on him. So, Alex, is it fair? I think it's fair, but just, you know, I, it's it's like marginal stuff, marginal improvements. Um, you know, I, I agree with Brady in the, in the sense that he took a leap in confidence and kind of the stuff that everybody wanted to see. And I just want to see more of that during the regular season. We know Jimmy wants to take it easy. And so Bam having, I think, more offense dedicated to him and his growth in that space during the regular season makes sense. I think that's the way for him to keep getting better in that area. But I don't expect too much more. I just want kind of a continuation of what we've already seen with Bam and and the steps that he's taken. You know, we all want him to polish up the baby hook and uh, try to get to the rim more often. And I think those types of reps will happen in the regular season. So from that end, I, I... yeah, I expect a little more, but, but you know, I'm not expecting 25 points per game bear. I, I want to go back to you on this though, because there are certain things you talk about the baby hook and, you know, we've talked about, you know, expanding the range beyond the mid range, showing confidence in the mid range jumper. But then there are other th- things that it seems like teams have scouted a little bit. And we got into this in the finals, for instance, like the fact that he puts the ball down low and there was, there were a lot of turnover problems during the playoffs before I pivot to Greg on this stuff, Alex Brady, is there anything like if I was to say, okay, there's one thing he needs to come back with better this time, just specifically one thing on the uh, defensively, there's nothing to criticize him about. So just offensively, is there one thing Brady? I would say just generally back to the basket against switches. I think that's the biggest thing just because let's say like, let's fast forward because I know a conversation we're going into going to get into if Dame is on the roster, you're going to have a lot more switches than you had last year. Like, I'll just put that simply. And what we've seen in the past is you have to be able to take advantage of those other than shooting over the top of him or getting to a spot like free throw line-ish. Like, you have to be able to put your back to the basket like Boston forced him to do in that Eastern Conference Finals a year ago past prior to this one where they kept putting Jalen Brown on him and they were like, bam, back him down. Like, that's the one thing that I feel like is going to make the difference. Because he's, like I said, he's going to have switches switches in this instance. And it's just, the baby hook ties into it, like Alex said, but it's just generally that type of stuff. All right. So, Greg, I'll go to you on this because you always talk about no ceiling. Um, but if we're saying we don't expect much more from him, him offensively, it suggests some kind of a ceiling here, right? I mean, is is that unfair? Does I mean, he, we, Pat said he wanted 15 shots per game from him last year, and that's exactly what he got. He got like 16 and a half before the All-Star break and about 13 and a half after the All-Star break, and then it kind of normalized in the playoffs. On so- the same usage year over year for three years now, as I look at his stats, um, the thing that jumps out is he did have a bad year when it comes to turning the ball over. So that's something that maybe he can look at um as as a place to improve statistically speaking though offensively speaking i think we've seen that at this juncture right now he can maybe expand his game a little bit more but to expect him to be a joel Embiid level 30 point per game score like when i say no ceiling that's not what i mean by that and like unfortunately it gets taken out of context and they take it so literally that what i mean is that like the sky is the limit and he can do anything and and fill up the box score. That's not really what I mean by it, but I can understand why people would say that. I just think that he is in a role where um, he could be probably a little bit, he could take care of the ball a little bit better, but asking him to score a ton more when you haven't added a ton of offensive weapons to the team, when he also carries so much of the burden defensively, I just think it gets a little weird when we're asking him to do so much and to hold so much together. Now, if Dame comes, this this conversation changes, and I know we're going to get to that. But I just I caution people on continuing to ask to 
uh, for Bam to pour from an empty cup when they have not necessarily surrounded him with a bunch of players that make it any easier for him to get to the things that he does best offensively. All right. We will, after the break, get to the player who will make it easier. But I want to stay on this, Alex and Brady, for one more sort of mini segment, which is let's say there is no trade before training camp or before the start of the season. With the current roster as constituted, who should be playing next to him in the starting lineup to maximize him? Does Duncan need to play more? Because we saw again that they picked up where they left off in the playoffs when they had those minutes together. Does Tyler need to start because the Bam Tyler pick and roll was working for about half of the season and then it kind of stopped working after that? It wasn't quite as efficient as it was. How do the other players fit into this? Alex, if Dame is not here, if this is the roster, maybe one addition here, minimum guy, something along those lines, vet guy, uh, who should they be playing Bam with the most? Well, I'm not sure about the one guy, but I agree with you that Tyler should be starting and Duncan uh, should be playing in a part of the rotation. So, like, if you somehow keep also one of those two guys in a Dame trade, I know we've kind of discussed every different possibility and angle of a Dame trade at this point. I, I would I would feel the same regardless. I think those guys need to be a part of what you're doing um, to different degrees. Like the, the Tyler Bam uh, chemistry and dynamic is something you definitely keep building upon in the regular season to the same, you know, the same kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, line of thinking that I was talking about with Bam and the reps he gets offensively during the regular season. I think you keep going at that stuff with Tyler as well with stuff they can do together. Um, I, I think you absolutely lean into that. Um, so that's probably my number one is, is a Tyler Bam build. I, I absolutely agree with you on playing Duncan and playing him with Bam more often than not. Like I know that it's rotations are very, very specific and it's hard to get everybody the right minutes and right lineups, but I think you absolutely have to play Duncan with Bam um, the most you can. And by the way, maybe by uh, turnovers per game, Bam had a kind of a down season there, but he actually finished with the lowest turnover percentage of his career last season. So that's true. Uh, he made some, you know, he's made some strides. And the one thing I, I think you can pick on is the free throw attempts. It went down from 6.9 per 75 uh, position last year to 5.8 this year. So uh, that's not, that's kind of right about where the rest of his career has been as far as like in the Jimmy uh, era. But I think that's kind of the one thing you would like to see is for the rim attempts to go up because the, those were also down by a little bit last year as far as raw attempts but and the mid-range attempts really went up. So I think that's kind of the one thing you could you can uh, point out other than, you know, like me and Brady talked about, being better at uh, attacking smaller dudes and, and being more polished there. I think just attacking the rim more often in general is kind of the running team, the running theme. And I would just go with, you know, play the guys who are already really good with him. And you've seen it for long periods of time and uh, a large sample size, which are Tyler and Duncan. And, and I think that's where we've kind of flipped. I don't know if we were all the way the other direction, but we talked for about two years about him extending his range and going out to the three point line. And I think all of us have kind of come to the conclusion that him going towards the basket is where it's at. And him taking guys off the dribble, making those kind of plays. And when we come back, we'll talk about somebody who will make that a lot easier. Uh, because the one thing that has decreased for Bam over the past couple of years is his dunks. Uh, his dunks are way down. Um, if you look at them overall as a percentage of his overall makes. And that, I think, is the number one thing that would change with Dame Lillard here for him offensively. So we'll get into some of the reasons why that might be. Do want to mention a couple of great sponsors of the five reasons sports network, better edge. That's our betting partner. That's with an O B E T T O R E D G E.com. It's not an app. You find it on the web. You get $20 to play. If you enter the code five RSN, that's five RSN. That's yours to play right away. And that's where you can bet legally. So we know that many people go on, they do the offshores. They're trying to get their money from Costa Rica. There's all kinds of rules, fees. They're going to give you your money back in Bitcoin. That doesn't happen with Better Edge. It's based in Minneapolis. They're legal in 44 states, including the state of Florida. And you can find the line that you want. Go to betteredge.com. Use the code 5RSN. Get ready for football season. We got lots of tournaments going on there already. So make sure you check that out. And of course, 
during NBA season and college basketball season. Also, we're sponsored here by Ocean's Finest. Ocean'sFinest.com. Over 40 years providing the finest seafood to the high-end cruise line industry and five-star dining establishments alike. Ocean's Finest now offers the same superior quality seafoods right to your door. Family-owned and based out of Miami for over four decades, carrying the best variety of premium seafoods from jumbo shrimp and, and large snow crab legs to individually vacuum-packed beautiful portions of Atlantic salmon, mahi-mahi, ahi tuna, and more. I can tell you, we had the shrimp. We had the, it's great stuff. Okay. And it will come, like I said, directly to your door and it comes quickly. So go to oceansfinest.com. Again, that's oceansfinest.com. All right. So now let's go to the other place. I feel like every episode we do now, every single one, like Alex and I do the up down episode, everything is with Dame, without Dame, with Dame, without Dame. Okay. So I am saying that if you, first couple of things, you, Greg, you kind of mentioned this that the expectation level for him offensively will be different and reduced if Dame is here. I think it'll be reduced for Jimmy also. It's just natural that that would be the case if you're subbing in Dame for Hero. But there are there are other ways, I think, that Dame will help maximize uh, Bam. We, we watched a playback. I think Dame's passing is underrated. Um, you talk about Dame and uh, uh, you know the ability to get the ball to bigs. He hasn't really played with athletic bigs over the course of his career. You look at it. I mean, we went through that top 20 list of players that he's played with, right? The guys he's played with the most, like the only notable bigs on there and it's Nurkic and who, I mean, there's really, there's really nobody else on that list. Marcus it's, And LaMarcus, right. But LaMarcus was not, LaMarcus was a mid range assassin really by the has time he, has he played with an athletic big. I, has he? No, I mean that's that might be the best. I mean, Myers Leonard, Myers it. Leonard has played the second most games with Dame Lillard in Portland. So the answer he is, is so the no. antithesis of an of an, of oh an athletic gosh. big. So I, I'm just I, I'll okay. Any of you guys can jump in on this, but I, oh, Jeremy just, Grant, Jeremy I'm, Grant. Well, Jeremy Grant, but I'm I'm envisioning switches. I'm envisioning uh, lobs. I'm envisioning like Bam being used the way that we thought Bam Bam was going to be used when he came into the NBA. Brady, you're nodding, so go ahead. No, totally. Like it's it, it's a perfect fit for both sides, just because to your point, like he has not played with a big like Bam, uh, but Bam has not played with a point guard like Damian Lillard that is a top 75 player of all time that literally when he passes half court. And I feel like I've said this on so many different programs just because we've been talking about the same thing forever. When Damian Lillard passes half court, like the screen is being made at that point. Like that is where Bam is now setting his screens. It's no longer on pin downs at the three point line for Duncan. It's no longer if we're doing high pick and rolls, like a couple feet away from the three point line for Kyle or Tyler. Like you literally, he has that much gravity that you have to set the screen that high. Uh, so I just think, and yeah, he, his usage is going to be lower because he's not probably have the ball in his hands as much. I'd say his, maybe his points per game goes down a little bit, but his shots are going to look a lot better. His efficiency probably goes up. Uh, and like I keep saying, I think the biggest difference you'd see from Bam with Dame is I think he'd have like a career year passing. I really do. Just because he's Dame is going to see so many blitzes and Bam is going to see so many pocket passes and Bam is going to see so many four on threes that he's going to have to make so many decisions. And in, hey, maybe this doesn't tie into the, the positives of a turnover <laughs> jump because he's going to have to he's going to make mistakes just because he's going to have the ball in his hands so much in those situations. Uh, but I think that's going to do wonders for the offense. I think that's going to be a pillar for them. Just him having to attack probably a little bit more out of that. And that ties into the stuff we we're talking about rim attempts that you could probably get to the rim a little bit more instead of settling. But that's just one portion of things. Like we could go on and on the, the handoffs. I think Bam could really benefit from because why was Duncan and Bam so great? Yeah, they have great chemistry. They know where they're going to be on the court at all times, but it's because when that action is made, the Bam's floor is expanded immediately. Like right when the ball is handed off, he has so much room to operate. It's why, why is Jimmy Bam not work as well? Because when Jimmy and Bam have been a pick and roll or a handoff, it, everything shrinks. It just does. Everything's going to comp down because they know nobody's shooting in that way. They're going to help off. So this kind of takes the good of Duncan Bam handoffs and the good of Tyler Bam pick and rolls because it has both of those elements because Dame can do the stuff that he does in pick and rolls at another level because he's doing it much higher up and in much higher shot making from three, obviously being one of the greatest shooters ever. Uh, and he can do this stuff off ball where he's, I know Spo's going to utilize him off pin downs or, or do stuff like that spot up wise. So I know I'm talking about in the Dame aspect here, but it, the reason I am is because that stuff is what's going to open up Bam's opportunities. Like his looks are going, yeah. just going to skyrocket. And career to point, year can, at the rim. Can right, we all dunks, agree? Career year up. at the rim and probably career year effective field goal percentage. 
because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. things are going to get easier. I mean, the the shots we talk about fifteen shots. He's going to get the fifteen shots. They're just going to come different ways. I and and, and I think when we're, when we're talking about this, when we talk about a a Jimmy Bam pick and roll, you had to almost involve a third heat player because of what you're talking about. Because the floor shrunk so much, so it was who was going to spot up out of that action. A Dame Bam situation. There's no third player necessary. Like it, it is essentially, you know, they have to make a decision between the two of them. One of them is going to end up with a good enough shot uh, that there's not. You don't need anybody else in that action. The hero Bam pick and roll. You're right. That worked better than the Jimmy Jimmy Bam pick and roll because Tyler is a threat to shoot mid range um, and, and and other things along those lines. I mean, Alex, do you think that would be the dominant action? Uh, that we would see from the Heat offensively would be the one five pick and roll. I think it's going to be a big part of what they do. I think the just in general, you're going to see a whole lot of Dame Bam pick and roll, and it's going to be from very up high on the court, which is what I think Heat fans are going to get used to seeing because that's not something that they've really ever seen, right? I don't think we've, you know, the Heat have ever had a threat from that high up on the floor. Like it's it's just such a unique, and when you run that with a roller like Bam, the possibilities are endless. Like Brady was talking about there, Bam is is an excellent player in that role, especially when you talk about him as a short roller, the amount of help that teams are probably going to end up sending at those guys just because it's so it's going to be extremely hard to guard. It's going to open up things for everybody. So, yeah, I think that's going to be a huge piece of the pie, but I don't think it, it, it'll be the only thing. And we've talked about this, whether on playbacks and probably on a podcast by now, I think there's going to be off-ball action involving Dame. And I think that's where it can really get interesting and get fun where in ways that we haven't seen Dane be used before. It would be cool if, you know, you saw that sooner rather than later and just kind of them trying to work that out to the regular season. Cause I think it would be great for Dame. I think it would be great for the heat. And I think it will, you know, for the rest of the NBA, it's going to make them panic. Like, and that's what you want. I think the offense um, to make that defense panic and make decisions and end up kind of, you know, having to scramble, through a lot of stuff going on. And I think that's that's what they're going to do with with Damon Bam. I think there's so many ways that you can use them off ball along with, you know, having to guard them all the way out when you're doing the high pick and roll. It's just going to be, you know, just a, a sort of cushion offensively that the Heat have not had whatsoever in the Jimmy Butler era, like nothing like this whatsoever. Are you calling for Bam hammer screens for Dame? Is that <laughs> what I hear? Because that's what it sounds like. I mean, you could, but the hammer screens will probably be being set by somebody else. I mean, just like in the stuff that they already do with Bam using like the post splits where he has the ball in the, uh, he has the ball on the block kind of just below the arc and you have him and you could have like Damon Duncan running on opposite ends of the court, just stuff like that. I mean, it's fun to try to think about the possibilities there. I think there there's a lot of different ways you can use those guys. Inverted stuff with Dame slipping. We're we'll be yelling at this for this stuff for for them to run it by uh game <laughs> game fifteen. Screening. Dame's gonna be screening for Jimmy and Bam. Like I, oh, I mean, I can't wait. All right, so Greg, let's take it back here a little bit before we close, because otherwise these guys will go on for two hours about uh, all the all the screens and all the other actions are gonna be run. I I want to get to kind of I, I don't know the the narr- not the narrative part of this, but but the. I, at the perception part of this for Bam, mm-hmm. because to me, what this will do was it will take that pressure off of him. And, and I think what we've seen over the past couple of years is this burden that he feels to be something that is not natural for him. It doesn't mean he can't do it, but this whole progression we've talked about, about him going to become a more of an alpha scorer, all those kind of things, take that burden off of Jimmy and all that. Bam has sort of had to talk himself into this. We, you know, I, it didn't happen as much this year, you know, but previously, obviously afterwards, I need to be more aggressive. I need to be more aggressive. I don't really think anybody's going to be asking for it anymore. It's not even going to be a desire of heat fans. Like, okay. If there are games where like he's dominated by Embiid or Jokic and he has seven points and three rebounds. Yes. He'll get criticized just like Bosch got criticized when he was the third guy or whatever, and didn't put up the huge numbers, but it's not going to be an expectation. It's not a necessity. And I feel like that's going to unleash bam to be his best because he can just pick and choose the things that are most comfortable for him instead of being forced to do other things. And I don't want to see him hitch 
when he look just because Dame and Jimmy are on the floor and sh- shouldn't hitch when he's got that jumper wide open at the free throw line and all that. But again, if he doesn't take 15 shots, it's not the end of the world. I and he becomes the third best player offensively on the team. A lot of teams have won championships with third best players, a lot less accomplished uh, and 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 gifted than he is. Um, it just and, happened. It, it it literally yeah. right. It it literally just happened. Exactly. I mean, well, it, if and, you know, who are you calling their third best player? Aaron Gordon. Yeah, I guess. any one of those guys. Right. And this is the other part of it. And you hit on it, Ethan, and I'll close with it. Like, I think that if they do acquire Dame and Dan, they better acquire Dame after all this. Uh, it may allow, because remember, Udonis Haslam is passing off this locker room to Bam Adebayo. Mm-hmm. When we asked Orlando Robinson, what was the first name that came to his head when we said Heat team captain? He said Bam Adebayo. Like, so Bam has a responsibility to this group that is beyond X's and O's now. And I think that bringing a guy like Dame in to take some of that pressure off on the court will allow him to embrace that role as the team captain overall. So I think, you know, the Dame acquisition will do as much for Bam Adebayo as it will for any member of the Miami Heat. Doesn't hurt either that they brought in his guy, that they brought his guy back, Josh Richardson, too. Uh, who who not only sort of understands the way that they do things and appreciates the way that they do things, but also was with Bam when Bam was like a young pup on this team. And now he comes back with Bam, a different kind of player with a different kind of responsibility. It, you know, again, it's one thing, he, obviously, DJJ, Gabe, he's had guys he's been close to on this team, but Josh was the original one for him. And I feel like you get Dame and Josh, it does become Bam's locker room a little bit more than it used to be. And Could honestly, be a couple more coming too. Right. And I don't think Jimmy cares. Honestly, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think I don't. And that's the other part of this is I don't think Jimmy cares. I don't think Jimmy wants some of the burdens that he's been given to be franchise face and will gladly pass that off to Dame and Bam. I think that's a different, uh, you know, th- that's a different thing for Jimmy than when, when he's been here before. So uh, we'll see how this thing goes. Obviously, we'll have more episodes coming on during the week. I'm going to be away for a few days. So Greg and the, and Brady and Alex going to be, and some of the other uh, members of the Five Reasons Sports Network, uh, you'll hear from here, Sean, Brian, uh, you know, many others from our network will be popping on here on the show. Make sure you subscribe to Off the Floor. We'll get constant content up there, and have a good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network.